President Trump had his second summit with North Korea's Kim Jong-un. Congress has been grilling the admitted and convicted liar Michael Cohen. Israeli Prime Minister Netanyahu was indicted by his political enemies in Israel. And Congresswoman Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez declared herself the boss. <laughs> and she pushed for a guaranteed minimum income for everyone. And yet, there's another issue from this week that's bigger than any of those. But I'm going to save it for last. So, like the song by the great American diplomat Kenny Rogers, you got to know when to hold them, know when to fold them, <laughs> know when to walk away when the dealing's done. Well, <laughs> President Trump walked away from his meeting with North Korean dictator Kim Jong-un and headed back to Washington without signing an agreement. I don't know if you noticed this, but the same critics who predicted that he would sign away America's security then condemned him for not signing away America's security. <laughs> hey, the left may be irrational, but at least they are consistently irrational. <laughs> I, I've said for some time that getting a true, verifiable denuclearization deal is not going to be a single event. It's going to be a process. And this was another step in the process. But what the leader of the hermit kingdom now realizes is that President Trump will not agree to something just to claim a victory unless it's a good plan for the rest of the world. Now, the people who couldn't give him credit for getting up from the table and demonstrating resolve probably would have maybe referred that he just deliver big pallets of green U.S. cash to the tune of billions of U.S. dollars in unrestricted money and then let North Korea keep its nuclear program. We've seen that before. <laughs> also this week, a surreal congressional hearing involved Michael Cohen, the admitted and convicted liar and former lawyer for Donald Trump. He admitted to and was convicted of lying to Congress. Now let that sink in. So they invite him back so he can lie about his lies. I mean, trusting him to come tell the truth is like trusting Jussie Smollett to outfit your kids for Halloween costumes, okay? <laughs> this audience is not sure they get that one. <laughs> Maybe they are afraid to admit that they do. And then in Israel, Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu has been charged with corruption crimes by his political enemies in the Israeli justice system just days before the Israeli elections. Now, if you think there are people out to get our president, just know that the far left in Israel hates their prime minister as much as our press and far left hate our president. Oh, and by the way, New York freshman Congresswoman Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez made some more news this week by declaring herself to be the boss. Now, the boss of what, we aren't sure. <laughs> but she has advocated guaranteeing everyone a minimum income. My question is, why a minimum? Come on, Congresswoman, let's go for a maximum. <laughs> I mean, if we're going to give away money, let's do it big, huh? <laughs> I mean, why guarantee $20,000 a year? Let's make it $40,000 or $75,000. Or heck, let's just make everyone in America a millionaire. Hand it out. Why not? Yeah, the audience understood that one for sure. <laughs> but the issue that has the potential of the greatest impact, not just politically, but culturally and morally, is the failure of the U.S. Senate to pass a bill by Senator Ben Sass of Nebraska that simply said that if a baby survived an attempted abortion and was born alive, the doctor present would render aid and try to save the baby's life. That bill failed. Let that sink in. People elected to make our laws refuse to pass a law that would have required treating a living, breathing baby with at least the same respect that we demand of treating a cat, a dog, or a sea turtle. And one of the senators who voted against it said, it wasn't good for women's reproductive health. That's a lie. Because when the baby's born, the woman has already reproduced. And there is nothing healthy about killing the baby. And the woman is no longer even physically connected to the baby. 
Now, why do I say that this was the most important issue? Because if we as a country and a culture cannot and will not try to save a crying baby that has survived one attempt to kill it, and then we allow the attending doctor to kill it instead of save it, and frankly, none of these other issues really matter. Because we won't have to wait the 12 years the radical greenies say we have before we become human toast because of global warming. You see, I believe God may pull the plug on us himself. And as it was in the time of Noah, he may just simply say, that's enough. And I mean, who could blame him? By the way, when God has enough of this, his version of a global warming ain't going to be pretty.